Good morning, you guys. Um, I have to tell you, I am going through my own personal real life game of angels and demons. You got, you cannot believe how these demons, they are attacking my computer. Now, here's what I want you guys to really understand. Look at this, uh, like, like two and three pages of prefetch here. They are attacking my computer so bad, just so that I won't make a video. Have you ever seen anything like this before in your life? So, so honestly, the only thing that you really have to ask yourself is, what are they so afraid of? That's the only question. Because if everything I was saying was not true and it was a lie, um, they would just go on their merry way, continuing with their smear campaigns about me. See, they've all made smear campaigns about me. And the reason that people make smear campaigns, let's get this straight. In, in the 3D level, the only people that actually do smear campaigns on other people are malignant borderlines, um, psychopaths, people like that, um, the cluster B types. They're the only people that create smear campaigns on other people. And the only reason they do that is to stop people from believing what the person is saying. Okay? That's why they all went and told you I was crazy. Including that other demon, uh, Sarah Landry. That's why they all told you I was crazy. So that none of you would believe me. Okay? But you have to ask yourself a question. Why would they be going to this much trouble to stop me from making a video if, if what I was saying wasn't true? That's the only question here. So um, I have something to, something really important to share with you today. Um, yesterday I went to church. You all know that. So um, what did the pastor read on? You're not going to believe it. Well, first thing, uh, first thing I'm going to tell you is, as I was sitting in church, uh, this demon, as you can expect from a demon disgustingly was touching me in the private area in church in church I had to bind it three times by the Holy Spirit and then once I bound it three times um, it started trying to make me fall asleep so that I wouldn't hear what the pastor was saying so I fought it the whole way no I couldn't enjoy church but I was so happy that I was there and I'll tell you what what all of this has turned into is um, it's how I live my whole life Everything is uh, a challenge to me, and I must uh, overcome obstacles. This is why I became a perfectionist. I must overcome obstacles. So this is, in fact, what, what, what this whole scenario that's happening now is to me, that I battle this demon and that I win. I must win. The same thing with these demons on the computer. It, this, is, this is actually like a Tom and Jerry game. I, I, I saw it done. Uh, because I, I know what to look for now in the task manager on what they've put in there. So I shut it off. I end the task. So when I get too much of this stuff shut down, they shut down my computer. So I, my computer has to restart. I got to restart my computer. They uninstalled my C drive cleaner. So what I do, I, I totally uninstalled it and I downloaded it again. And it's always that I'm going to show them this is my computer. Who do they think they are? Who do they think they are? And now it is it has just become a joke. These these people are such total idiots and they live in fear. That's one demon we all know they have is they live in fear. What what are they so afraid of by my videos? That's the big question here. This is the question that every single one of you need to be asking yourself. What are they so afraid of by my videos that they're doing this? They don't want me to make a video. Okay? Because uh, if, if what I was speaking was nonsense, they would just continue with their uh, smear campaigns about me and, and they wouldn't bother with me. The same thing with that fake one from Portugal. Um, he's had students come out about him for years now talking about his NDAs and that he's having sex with his students up there. He has never attacked any of those students. He has never attacked any of those students. Because the whole thing, the whole thing about the guru is that they're not in the personhood, so they don't let personhood things get to them. So he has never gone back against those people that came out. Why? Because he knew they were still in the sleep and people wouldn't believe them. But, but he's attacking me. You can best be sure he's attacking me. Okay? This is what you all need to really understand here. 
Same thing with that terror demon. And we all know how she attacked me. We all know how she attacked me. Oh, by the way, let me just tell you something. I went and looked on her page yesterday. It appears that her uh, ho digger thing didn't happen yesterday. Hopefully those people woke up and got smart and kicked her to the curb. That's what I'm hoping. But um, I see that she has a new, uh, a, a new scam going on now. Now she thinks she's a painter. And um, she's putting her childlike paintings on tote bags and coffee cups. Another way for her to scam your money from you. Okay, um, it's pitiful. It is so pitiful. But yet, not many tarot readings on her page anymore. Gee, I wonder why. I wonder why. I want you to go back if you're interested. I want you to go back. Um, the day she started making those paintings, and she's been doing the paintings ever since, her deal is she's so envious of me that no matter what I do, she thinks she's going to do it better. It was the day that I showed you guys my painting of my angel. And uh, the angel is made in like browns and beiges and stuff. If you go back to the first day where she put out her or showed her painting, she actually says in there, I don't like those basic tones. I like bright colors. Um, so she put down my painting and yet her paintings don't come close to my paintings. You understand? Does that sound like ego? It was meant to sound like ego because it was meant to shove it in that one's face. That's what it was meant to do. No punches being pulled here. Okay? Um, I don't care. You don't see me on here uh, tooting my own horn. You never do. But the truth will be the truth. So he here's what happened yesterday when I went to church. Guess what the pastor taught on? And he said it was strange that he was led to teach on this book. Because he didn't plan on teaching this book. So yes, absolutely, it was a message for me. It's the book of Jonah. Now, of course, everybody's heard about Jonah being stuck in the, in the whale's stomach for three days. Um, I, I really never, never knew about this book of Jonah, of course, because I never read the Bible. So I'm only going to read the first two verses because that's really all he read. And uh, this is what stood out to me. It says, the word, of, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. It's the third verse. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. And this is, this is what stood out to me. So the, the last video I, I made, I said, I'm not going to be making any more videos because the only thing that, that I'm going to be focused on is getting rid of these demons. And this is what's most important. And uh, the, the Holy Spirit is telling me, no, um, I have told God that I am his servant. My life is not my own. And... Um, what I was doing was pulling a Jonah, was pulling a Jonah, because although the Holy Spirit showed me that there were people out here that I was helping, um, I really was at a point that I was saying, nobody out here ever helped me. Um, let them fend for themselves. I've, ga I've given them enough help. Let them fend for themselves. That's really what was happening here. And uh, the same thing happened to Jonah. The, the people of, of Nineveh were, were extremely vile and vulgar. They, they, they were just murdering people. They had mounds of bodies piled on top of each other. And God was sending Jonah there to tell them that they were sinning and to stop their sinful ways. And Jonah didn't want to do that because he didn't think he was going to make it out of there alive. So uh, he ran the opposite way. And that's exactly what I, what I was doing. God is telling me, come out here. This is your story. This is why you went through this, so people can know that this is real and that you can overcome it through Jesus Christ. And what are you doing? Why are you running this way? So I said, okay, okay, Lord, I'm going back this way. Um, this, is, this is what it is. So uh, know, know how to look for the signs and heed the warnings. 
all the warnings. Um, you know, I, I thought I was following the right path when I was following these demons. And um, I, I, I wasn't connected to the Holy Spirit or, or it was actually these demons telling me what to do that I, I was thinking was God telling me what to do. You see, I'm now able to separate what the demons are telling me that I'm not my thoughts. I'm in a much different place now. So I, I will follow where I'm led. And that's that's really all I will say. So um, that was what the, what the pastor uh, taught on in church. And it was a surprise movement from the Lord to him. He was not planning on teaching this. And his big, what he said there is if you are here today, it's no accident you were supposed to hear this. And uh, I take that and uh, I receive it. That's what I can say. So, there was, there was a, a verse that, that I read, uh, that, not that I read, that I heard this morning that I need to share with every single one of you because this is in fact what the Lord is calling me to do. So it's Isaiah chapter um, chapter 8, verse 16 to 22. It says, Bind up this testimony of warning and seal up God's instruction among my disciples. I will wait for the Lord who is hiding his face from the house of Jacob. I will put my trust in him. Here am I. And the children the Lord has given me, we are signs and symbols in Israel from the Lord Almighty who dwells on Mount Zion. When someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? We're talking about psychic mediums here and tarot cards. This whole thing that, that I've been out here warning you about, okay? Consult God's instruction and the testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. If they're not giving you the word of the gospel, of the Bible, and this is why that one is damned to hell. Uh, and I'm not damning her. She damned herself. She actually blasphemed against the Holy Spirit by telling you what was in this Bible was a lie. And according to her, she read the Bible backwards and forwards four times. So what she did was not an ignorant statement. She absolutely knew what she was doing. And she absolutely knew that she was lying and deceiving you. If anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. Uh, Nithyananda constantly bashing Christians and saying all this stuff is, is a lie. Is a lie. That, that Christians are persecuting Hindus? No, sorry, it's the other way around. It's the other way around. See, this is Satan's, Satan's time to cause havoc on the earth. Nithyananda is the one who's persecuting Christians. Distressed and hungry, they will roam through the land. When they are famished, they will become enraged and looking upward will curse their king and their God. Then they will look toward the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom and they will be thrust into their darkness that was what I read this morning and like when when my secret name was given to me how it flashed this flashed because I, I, I listened to about five chapters of uh, Isaiah this flashed this was what I was supposed to share with you today so you understand so it's not only the Deuteronomy uh, verse that I read it's also here in Isaiah. So it's Isaiah chapter 8, verses 16 to 22. Read it. And I've also been uh, told this morning that um, Sid and Nanda has been watching my video. She has been this whole time. So I don't know if she understands what I'm saying right now. Um, but she was still massively trauma bonded to that terror demon. She truly was trauma bonded to that tarot demon. I hope she's starting to wake up now to understand that she needs deliverance. That what she thought she was talking to dead people were demons. And that, that was who told her to attempt suicide. And that 
POS who called herself her guru knew this this whole time. She knew it this whole time. And then had the audacity to come out here and call her crazy. Okay? Yeah, and the, this whole thing, it, it stinks to high hell. Because that's what it is, high hell. High hell. Um, Isaiah Saldivar put a video out. I haven't even seen it yet. Uh, it says, a woman went to hell and this is what she saw. I'm going to put that in the description. Yeah, I want you all to understand, if you hear God's word and warning you, especially from someone who has been there and has made their way out. I'm still battling these, these last few demons here, but I've made my way out. And if you don't heed my warning, then what, the, what did the, the verse just say to you? They will look toward the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom, and they will be thrust into utter darkness. Not my words. Not my words. So um, here's the other thing that I want to tell you that happened. This demon that's here is uh, is Moloch, okay? Um, and and I, I want to clear up a few things that, that came out when Sarah Landry came out. She, she actually came out and said that, that she believed Nithya and Anda had multiple personalities. Um, and I went back at her. And, and the reason I went back at her was the fact that she's not qualified to make a statement like that, number one. Number two, she and um, the Rhetoric Indian actually did the, the psychopathic chess checklist that um, uh, the psychologist, Bob, what's his name? I can't think of his name. Um, oh man, I can't believe I can't think of his name. It's it's a, a psychopathic checklist, and she and the rhetoric Indian actually check these things off to say, well, he does this. He does. When, when someone does that checklist, the person themselves are supposed to be checking off the checklist. It's their perception of how they feel and what they think and what they're doing, not someone else who's looking. Because what's happening? Sarah Landry has her own demons and her own problems that she's never addressed. And she's projecting her stuff onto what she perceived he was doing. It, it was so bogus. And all I can say is, having been a scapegoat and having been the victim of multiple smear campaigns out here, and she knew exactly what a smear campaign was because she helped Nithya and Anda put smear campaigns out here for the whole nine years she was there. She was the general in his army. So when, when she left, she said that she thought he had multiple personalities. And um, I didn't understand it right then, but here's what happened. When he started doing the uh, Paramashivoham program online, because of COVID, people were not able to go to the Adenum for the program. So he started doing it online. And to draw people in, he started doing it for free. And he thought he was going to get me to go in there. He said, "I don't want if you don't have any money, I don't want you to, to, to not get the benefits of the program. After five or six years, he didn't care about me whatsoever. Now all of a sudden, I don't want you to miss out if you don't have the money. Well, I didn't take the program, praise God. Um, but he told everybody it was free. And then once people started in the program, he made them sign some paper that they were going to tie 10% to him or something like that. So he locked them in that way. But here's what happened. There was one of the days he put out a video and he said he was Paramashiva. So this is the word that he used that I thought it was just an Indian word or a Hindu word for God. That's what I thought. I had no idea who he was referring to. So it was absolutely Moloch. Okay? Um, what happened? He said it was Paramashiva in his form that, that was speaking directly to everybody. And um, I was like, what the heck is he doing? I'd never seen anything like this. And I'm watching him. I'm very, very observant. And I'm watching him. His eyes are not blinking. His eyes are not blinking at all. And I'm like, oh my God. I got on my page. I made a video. I said, guys, look at this. I said, what is going on here? What is going on? I said, he's not even blinking. What is going on here? And uh, nobody would answer me, of course. Um, 
what I understood, and see, after Sarah Landry left, Nithya Ananda contacted me, but it was not Nithya Ananda, it was actually Moloch. Um, he allows Moloch to fully take over his consciousness, his mind, emotions, and body. This is why he does what he does. He fully allows Moloch to take him over completely. And here's how I know this. The name that he used was Blissful when he contacted me. So uh, what does Nithyananda's name actually mean? It means eternal bliss. And so the name, the, the YouTube name that he used was Blissful. And I asked, because I had an understanding that it was him. Because he's contacted me several times using different names like that. Always something to let me know it was him. Okay? So, um... I asked him a uh, spiritual question and he gave me an in-depth answer. I knew it was him. And then he started talking about sex. And then it was right after it was right after I made a video saying, um, so why did I say the F word when I'm mad? But I never called you any bad names. I never called you a pedophile. At least back then I didn't. Before I knew everything that he did. Um, I said, I never called you a pedophile, but look at how you treat me. That was that night or the night after that, he contacted me and he said, um, I see that you are uh, chaste. Uh, it's better than me uh, me uh, supporting someone who I thought was chaste, meaning Sarah Landry. And then what he said to me was, now you will have someone claim you. You will have someone claim you. I want to make sure because I wrote it down because I kept forgetting it. Yeah, claim you. You will have someone claim you. And I said, claim me? I don't need no one to claim me. And the first thought in my head was, what am I, luggage? Do you need to claim me? I don't need no one to claim me. Um, and after I said that to him, he made one of his goons that are hacked into my stuff write me. Uh, because I saw it said proxy. And the language was different now. It was just some local idiot that was hacked into all my stuff that was talking to me. It wasn't him anymore. Once I, I renounced that, he claimed me. But something that he said while he was talking to me stood out, and it was brought to my memory today. Um, when, I, when I was asking him about that spiritual stuff, and he gave me that in-depth answer, what he said to me, he was fully Moloch. He's, he's not Nithyananda. He's not Nithyananda. It was fully Moloch who was talking to me. And... He said, um, he said, well, it looks like your friend here has failed quite a few tests. So, you know, the reality of it is um, he does appear to have multiple personalities to people who don't understand the spiritual world. Sarah Landry also made the comment that when he had sex with her, he told her that this is not physical that what they were doing was not physical. So again, it threw her for a loop because she didn't understand how these demons enter the form, the ways the demons enter the form, and that he literally took over her form. She didn't understand that. But I somehow did back back when that happened. I was putting the pieces together. Well, now I, I don't have to put pieces together. I fully understand what happened. And it's only since I came back to Christianity and found the demon slayers that I fully understand what's happened here. So... All of you people that have had sex with Nithya Nanda, you are fully infected with Moloch and Baal. And if you've been uh, uh, sexually molested as a child or been promiscuous, uh, you've got Jezebel or you've got Lilith in you. Uh, no doubt Sarah Landry has Lilith in her. Um, you all need to, need to get um, deliverance. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling you. Anyone who has had sex with Nithya Nanda, you, he's not Nithya Nanda. The, the, the one known as Nithya Nanda, uh, in, in fact, has failed too many tests. Moloch has fully taken him over. This is why he no longer looks like himself anymore. That, that demon look that I was getting in my face looked just like him. It looked just like him. And what happened, the more that I'm reading the Gospels, the, the more that I'm, um, I'm watching the demon slayers, um, um, I'm listening to Christian anything, 
um, this thing is getting weaker and weaker. I don't see it in my face at all anymore. I don't see it in my face at all. And um, it wasn't that I was failing tests. It was that I still, I wasn't getting any closer to the Lord. This is the whole thing. This is the whole thing. What, what he means about failing tests. It's not whether you're a good person or not. That's not the test. The test is, are you moving closer to the Lord? That is the test. When you're talking about angels and demons, that's the only test that matters. Are you moving closer to the Lord? Not, are you a good person? Did you have the opportunity to steal and chose not to steal? Well, that, that's a commandment. You should not steal. But, but what's going on in your mind? What's in your heart? Are you still watching porn? Are you still fornicating? Are you still living your life in crap? Well, okay, you made one decision not to steal. Good on you. But what else are you doing in your life? These are the tests that Moloch was talking about that Nithi and Anda had failed. He had fully taken over his form and his mind. So this is why he appears to have multiple personalities. And this is why he does what he does. And, um... Anyone who's, who's had an initiation with him, this is who he's putting into you. Besides the Kundalini demon, besides the snake demon, this is who he's putting into you. In his, de in his alien video, he said, if you're feeling tingling going up your spine, and you notice the first thing he said in there, you must consent. He said, you have something called consciousness, and you must consent for me to come into your consciousness. And of course all the sleepers, I was one of them, didn't understand what he was talking about. So he not only put the demon, uh, the snake demon in you, he's also putting Moloch in you. Everyone who's had his initiation, you all need deliverance, all of you. If you haven't seen these demons act up yet in your life you will you will you will start having illnesses in your body these demons don't love you Nithi Ananda doesn't love you these demons will just try to hurt you they want you to die before you're fully in the oneness with God they want you to die because when that happens they have you that's what they want these are what the tests are that Moloch was telling me about that Nithi and Anda failed. And that, those were his exact words. Well, it seems like your friend has failed quite a few tests. And I knew it was Nithi and Anda who was talking to me. So I understand the whole multiple personality thing that Sarah Landry was talking about. But it was in fact the demon Moloch. He is the ruler of the alien kingdom. Who are demons. Who are demons. This is why they're all calling... Nithi Ananda, an avatar because he is a demon that has landed on this earth but the whole the whole thing about an avatar is they're supposed to come on the earth when the earth is in trouble to make the earth better to wake people up he has spun even his own scripture and doctrine he has lied to everybody about everything he is in fact Moloch and this is why um I can't remember anybody's name anymore. Uh, Jonathan and Sharma's children were kidnapped. He's after the kids. He's after the kids. He's the, he's the, he's the god of, of uh, child uh, sacrifice. And he's the head of the alien kingdom. And that is who that is. That is not the person that we all once knew and loved as Nithi Ananda. Nithi Ananda is long gone. And I noticed the change in him. I can give you the exact time. It's when he started doing Sadashi Voham. How, how many years back was that? It was when he started doing Sadashi Voham. And he started um, himself getting all of these powers. He was calling on the demons more and more to get all of these powers. And all of those Gudical kids were all of a sudden displaying all these powers that they were able to uh, read on the, on the slab and uh, all, all move the coconut. That's when moving the coconut was all being done. And um, uh, I can't remember. See, God doesn't want me to know this stuff anymore. 
the, the remote viewing and all of that stuff. That he made a big deal about that. That was right during Sadashi Voham when he was calling more and more on these demons and uh, it was done from that point. He had lost that the light in his face. There was no more light in his face after that. And I'll never forget what he said. He said, everyone will now have new DNA. And it, they will call it Nithyananda DNA. See, he knew exactly what he was doing. And everybody that was in his inner circle knew exactly what he was doing. That's why I have no compassion for Sarah Landry whatsoever. She is an outright demon. So, if you've been following any one of those three, you all need deliverance. You're infested with demons. You're infested with them. So, yesterday I saw a short, um, I saw a short little post by Pastor Vlad, and I'm going to share this with you. Let me just see what they've done to my computer here. Actually, you know, I think they they want to hear what I have to say because then it, it gives him uh, it gives him points on what to say to counter what I say. But uh, they don't want anyone else to hear what I say. This is the funny thing for me. This is really the funny thing for me. So, um, Pastor Vlad put out uh, a short little a short little post, like no video, just a post that everyone should learn God's promises and memorize them. So, of course, I saw people on there, and I listen. I'm not putting these people down because I used to be one of them, so ignorant of myself. And um, someone asked him, Pastor Vlad, could you teach on this more so so we know what God's promises are? Um, all I did was Google what is God's promises, and I came to this post. So it says, memorize the below scriptures that God, that promise God's help and aid in overcoming what you are facing today. Pray over them and speak them out loud, and you will begin to see God move in your life for his glory and for your good. His word is faithful and truth. So I'm going to read these to you right now, and I'm also going to make an audio copy of this so that you can have it and I can have it and just keep listening to it over and over again and at least for me this will be the easiest way for me to memorize these things so the first one is Isaiah 41 10 so do not fear for I am with you do not be dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you and help you I will uphold you with my righteous hand my righteous right hand Isaiah 26 3 you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Deuteronomy 31.8 The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. John 16.33 I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Psalm 32, 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Psalm 37, verses 23 and 24. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 to 29 come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls second Corinthians chapter 12 verses 9 to 10 but he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in, in insults, 
in hardships and persecution and difficulties for when I am weak then I am strong amen Isaiah 40 31 but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not be faint Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 9 do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your requests to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about such things whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you first Peter chapter 2 verse 24 he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds you have been healed James chapter 1 verse 2 to 3 consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance amen exodus chapter 14 verse 14 the lord will fight for you you need only to be still psalms chapter 9 chapter 91 verse 3 surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence romans chapter 8 verse 28 and we know that in all things god works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose exodus chapter 20 verse 12 honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land of the lord your god is giving you isaiah chapter 40 verse 29 he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak isaiah 41 13 for i am the lord your god who takes hold of your right hand and says to you do not fear i will help you isaiah 43 2 when you pass through the waters i will be with you and when you pass through the rivers they will not sweep over you when you walk through the fire you will not be burned the flames will not set you ablaze isaiah 54 10 though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken nor my covenant of peace be removed says the lord who has compassion on you isaiah 54 17 no weapon forged against you will prevail and you will refute every tongue that accuses you this is the heritage of the servants of the lord and this is their vindication from me declares the lord isaiah 58 6 is not this the king of fasting i have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and unite the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and break every yoke isaiah 61 1 the spirit of the sovereign lord is on me because the lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners james 1 5 if any of you lacks wisdom you should ask god who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you james 4 7 submit yourself then to god resist the devil and he will flee from you first john 1 9 if we confess our sins he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness 
2 Chronicles 7.14 If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.36 Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. John 8.36 So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Malachi 3.10 Bring, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Mark 11.24 Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Joshua 1.19 have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Philippians 4.19 And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Psalm 18.3 I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. Psalm 23, 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 34, 17. Excuse me, I just saw my camera flicker. Oh, you demons, you haven't learned. You haven't learned. May the blood of Jesus Christ torment you. And may the Holy Spirit bind you until such day as you reach out and beg Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Blessings. Psalm 34, 17. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. Psalm 37, 4. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 50, 15. And call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. Amen. Psalm 86, 5. You, Lord, are forgiving and good abounding in love to all who call to you. Proverbs 13.11 Dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Proverbs 22.6 Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Amen. Revelation 3.5 The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my Father and his angels. Psalm chapter 9, verses 9 to 10. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7. Six to seven. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess that your faith, you profess your faith and are saved. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart 
and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. James chapter 5, verses 14 through 15. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 to 33. So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Matthew chapter 7, verses 9 through 11. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Psalm chapter 103, verses 2 to 5. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with the love and compassion? Who satisfies your desires with good things so that youth is renewed like the eagles? Psalm chapter 107, verses 13 through 16. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away their chains. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he breaks down gates of bronze and cuts through bars of iron. John chapter 14 verses 13 through 16. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Ephesians uh, chapter 3, verses 16 through 19. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. This demon is trying to blur my vision, so please bear with me. I'm going to continue. Luke chapter 11 verses 9 through 13. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though, are evil... How to give good know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Amen. Romans chapter eight verses thirty one to thirty five. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him? graciously give us all things who will bring any change against those whom God has chosen it is God who justifies who then is the one who condemns no one Christ Jesus who died more than that who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. And that is the end of, of um, God's promises. So I hope you guys um, will listen to these over and over again. Pastor Vlad said for all of us 
to memorize these things. And this is how we are going to combat the enemy, the evil one. Okay? Um, so please understand, this, this message was, was very specific for me, that I, I must continue to, to give you the word that, that's being given to me. And it's geared towards you people following the occult and, and uh, mysticism and witchcraft. You know, something else stood out to me yesterday. This this message is for all people. Um, I, I, and I, I'm always, I always find myself saying it's for all people, but especially you Christians that left, um, it, it doesn't matter. It's for all people. It's for all people. If one soul is lost, it's one too many. And that is the truth of this. Understand, these gurus don't care two ounces about you. They're infecting you with demons and uh, you're going to have to suffer the rest of your life with diseases, with mental illness, um, with nightmares, with them raping you at night, um, defiling you, uh, your body while you're sitting in God's house. This is what I was subjected to yesterday. The Holy Spirit bound it three times when I asked and uh, then it tried to make me fall asleep and I fought that as well. So, um, this is very real. This is very real. And I hope um, if uh, Sid and Anda doesn't see this, that someone will be so kind as to share this with her and have her uh, memorize these Bible verses. And she needs deliverance very badly. Okay? You guys have a blessed day.